Hi guys, it's Laura from Green Tree. I am here today with your herb of the month and it's going to be rosemary. I know you've probably used rosemary before. You probably think, oh, I know all the things that rosemary can do, but there are some really interesting things you may not yet have tried. So I'm gonna try and go over those a little bit today and uh, see if we can't give you some new inspiration. So you've probably seen rosemary before. I clipped a little piece off the one that I overwintered in case you haven't seen it fresh. It's not at its most beautiful because it's just starting to grow back. So I've still got a little bit of uh, like brown ends and stuff here, but this is what rosemary looks like. It has kind of a needle-like uh, shape to the leaves, sort of a, almost a piney smell as well. I can't smell it super well because I'm having allergies today, but <laughs> it does smell nice. Um, it's very fresh and herbaceous, and you've probably seen it a lot more often dried. That's how you will be getting it if you signed up to participate in this program that we are doing with the library. Uh, you can pick up your samples at the uh, Veterans Memorial Library in Mount Pleasant if you have signed up for that. If not, we do have it at the store, uh, at Green Tree, or if you've got it in your yard, use that. I also have it dried here. I picked it off my plant and dried it on the sprigs so you see the woody little stems in there too. Now rosemary is kind of a Mediterranean plant. So I mentioned that mine is overwintered. I grow it in a pot and I brought it into the garage over the winter so that it would be protected from the worst of the elements. Um, some people find that if they grow it in a sheltered place, it is possible to grow it outside over the winter in Michigan. Um, I have not tried that yet, so your mileage may vary. Um, but because it is Mediterranean, it does like a dry, um, even almost sandy area sometimes. It doesn't like to be waterlogged, so if you have it in a pot, make sure it's got good drainage. Um, and it, it can handle drought, so when we have really hot, dry summers, rosemary can still do well. Um, this is what I have left from, from last summer that I'm still using up. Also, it can live a very long time, which is kind of interesting. I mean, decades. You could have the same rosemary plant for decades if you take good care of it. They can get quite large. Um, a few years ago, we had someone bring one in to the co-op, actually. Um, it got adopted by one of our staff members that was, I'd say, at least three feet tall. They can be grown, sometimes they'll be used as like a landscape feature and almost a head shape. They can be trimmed into shapes like a topiary. Um, they really will form like a, a small bushy tree. It's really an interesting growth when you see it in those larger sizes. But let's go a little bit more into what we can actually use it for. Like I said, rosemary has this very bright, herbaceous, um, almost piney kind of smell to it. And that aromatic quality lends itself really well to roasting. This is probably a way that you've tried it before. People will do it uh, with like roast potatoes, toss them in olive oil and rosemary, throw them in the oven until they're nice and soft. Um, you can do it with roast meats or mushrooms. It's good in sauces. So things where it's being warmed and cooked are nice. But the preparations I'm gonna give you today are a little bit more off the beaten path. Um, I made a chocolate chip rosemary cookie that turned out really good. For the full recipe, you'll have to go over to our website, uh, greentree.coop, so that's greentree.coop, in order to find that recipe. Uh, but I'll give you the basics here. I'm gonna show you the cookie. Well, what's left? We, we ate most of these since I made them yesterday, because they're really good. So they're just like a cute, fluffy little, Come on, focus for me, camera. Well, they're just a very cute little fluffy um, chocolate chip cookie looking thing. They do have a little bit of Christmas to the outside and then they're nice and chewy on the inside. But this flavor combination of the chocolate and rosemary is really interesting. I also added some lemon zest um, to give it a more aromatic quality. This is the lemon that I zested. <laughs> it's the only lemon I had on hand. So that's why I'm showing you this one. Um, but I'm still gonna use the lemon the, the guts of the lemon for something else. Um, but this really herbaceous quality of the rosemary with that like sharp tart, but fruity smelling um, aspect of the lemon makes these cookies just fantastic. I gave one to my husband and his first comment was, 
what is that flavor? And I told him it was rosemary. And then he took a second bite and said, this is a really good cookie. So <laughs> I suggest trying these out. Um, it was very simple, butter, sugar, flour. There is an egg in it, but you can go ahead and use the Bob's Red Mill egg replacer if you need to. Um, and for the butter, I would suggest Miyoko's is a really great non-dairy butter to use if you want it to be non-dairy. Uh, Earth Balance will work just as well. I just have a soft spot for the Miyoko's. <laughs> um, and then there's a little bit of uh, baking powder and salt, but, but otherwise a very simple recipe. Uh, again, that'll all be available on the website. If you've never had rosemary with chocolate, never had it in something sweet before, I really recommend trying it. Now another thing I use rosemary for a lot is I will take a slice of lemon and a dried sprig of rosemary. Fresh will work great if you have it. And I will put these two in a cup with some hot water and it's really kind of clearing and relaxing. It's got a nice combination of flavors. Um, it's a little more interesting than just tea. Uh, so it gives, you a, it gives you a little variety. That same combination, lemon and rosemary, actually works quite well in a cocktail if you are so inclined. Uh, I tend to pair it with bourbon, but that could be, your mileage may vary. Um, anyway, I do it more often as the tea, and I suggest if you are a tea drinker, try a slice of lemon and a sprig of rosemary in your hot water and see what you think. Now we're also going to talk a little bit about savory uses. So my other recipe I'm gonna give you guys is for Four Thieves Vinegar. So you can see there's a little four on this bottle. I made it with uh, Bragg's apple cider vinegar, but I wrote that on the top so I would know that this is the one that I've already made into Four Thieves Vinegar. This is a popular remedy that a lot of people enjoy for various uses. I won't go into the, the medical stuff here, um, but it's also just really tasty. It makes a great base for salad dressings, um, and you can use it as a, a flavoring in anything, anything savory that you would be putting vinegar into as well. So you can see, after it's been strained, it looks basically like regular apple cider vinegar, but the particular way that I make it reason it's called Four Thieves Vinegar, you tend to have four, <laughs> I can count four, four different herbs in it. Uh, and the four that I have chosen to use are garlic, rosemary, hot pepper, and ginger. Uh, there's other really common herbs that you can find. You can come up with your own combination if you like. Cloves will appear in a lot of people's remedies. Um, but again, I like the rosemary, garlic, ginger, and cayenne. So for every two cups of apple cider vinegar, I would add about a half tablespoon of the little garlic flakes. You can see this is not the granules, these are the chunky flakes. Or two cloves of garlic just chopped into small chunks if you're using the fresh. The vinegar will preserve it enough that with that small of amount of garlic, you're fine to not refrigerate. Um, and then a tablespoon of dried rosemary or a couple of sprigs of fresh, if that's what you have. A tablespoon of ginger juice. I like to keep the ginger juice on hand because then I don't have to bother with like washing or peeling anything. Um, or if you don't have the ginger juice, you could use about a one inch chunk of fresh ginger cut into small pieces. And then one to two uh, dried cayenne peppers. You forgive my, my jar reuse. This used to be a, a coconut oil jar, I think. <laughs> um, but one to two dried whole cayenne peppers. If you want it to be less hot, you can leave the seeds behind in the bottom of the jar. Um, if you want it to be more hot, make sure the seeds are going in there with it. And I put those in there, cover them up with that. Again, about two cups of vinegar for the one tablespoon of rosemary, half tablespoon of garlic flakes, tablespoon of ginger, and one to two of the uh, cayenne pepper. So that's your, your four things that you're putting in the vinegar. Give it a nice little shake and leave it sit for a week or two. Strain out the chunks when you're ready to use it. It will have such a wonderful pungent flavor. I find it, it helps to clear the sinuses and like I said, makes a really excellent salad dressing. So 
those are your recipes. Um, oh, I did want to tell you a little quick tip. I used the dried rosemary for those cookies, and I just busted it up in a little mortar and pestle. If you have one of these around, that works well because I didn't want it in whole pieces, but I didn't want it powdered either. Um, you could also use a bullet blender, a coffee grinder, a spice grinder. Well, you could even, I mean, kind of chop it up a little bit if you if you didn't have any of those other gadgets. But I found the little mortar and pestle works well for that. Um, last, the other thing that you can look for with rosemary is you'll find it often in body care products, especially things like shampoos. Um, I make a hair wax that has rosemary in it. Um, sometimes even in, in facial care products and lotions, but that, that wonderful sort of evergreen scent is really nice and it's got some astringent properties that, that can be good for the skin and the hair. So if you find a, a rosemary uh, oil, rosemary essential oil, you can add that to products you make yourself or you can find products that already contain it. Oh, and finally, fun fact, rosemary extract uh, can actually be used as a preservative. So you will often find it in natural products like um, crackers, sometimes cookies or chips as a natural preservative that's going to lengthen the shelf life and help prevent growth of anything nasty in your snacks. So those are some of the uses for rosemary. Again, check the website for the recipe for these delicious little cookies. They're so good. There's not very many left. I might eat this one once I turn off the camera. <laughs> and the uh, Four Thieves vinegar. And you can use any apple cider vinegar. I just, I happen to like the Bragg's and I have it around already. So that's the one I use. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, if you have any questions, stop down by the store and ask us. I hope you sign up for the next one. We're taking a little break as we get ready for the new store, and uh, I will see you soon. Bye, guys.